Hey there, Canaanites. Welcome back. And God, how quickly we've returned. I just uploaded the last episode. Thursday saw the release of episode one, which is actually the third episode in the season of season two. But anyway, we have a lot to discuss, so let's get right to it. The episode begins as we're introduced to Midnight Facility, basically the Guantanamo of the future. Hidden away in an asteroid, Midnight is, as I explained in the last episode, a place for Oni to hide away people that will never see the light of a star again, unless Oni wants them to, which is very unlikely. As Maya enters the facility, her unease is palpable. A mere asteroid on the outside, featureless black holes on the inside. Very Oni. Upon properly entering, one of the ODSTs that had extracted Maya makes a smug remark, telling Pharaoh she's welcome for saving her. Maya decks him. After that little scuffle, Maya is told to head up to floor 18, but asks instead to be sent down to the cubes first. I'll give you one guess why. Indeed, Maya is going to see Benjamin Giraud. When she first sees him, he's scrawling on a piece of paper in the corner, as if writing a story, and even remarks, I'm, I'm not done yet, I need to finish this. There are still some edits to make. When she has the window depolarized, Ben, much to her shock and ours, is happy to see her. He didn't know the truth. He thought she was still Pharaoh, and she was here to rescue him. Maya, unsure how to react, decides to keep up the charade and talks to Ben. As they talk, we learn of the horrors that Ben has endured. Hallucinations, to the point that he actually has to have a method to check that what he's seeing is real. The lack of contact having driven him mad. There's blood on his bed and closed wounds on his hands. And as he goes on, we learn that Ben is now ready to work with Oni, wanting to undo the damage he did. But then, it all falls apart. Michael Sullivan's voice comes over the PA, telling Maya to back off while using her real name and identifying her as an Oni agent. Ben finally puts it together, and starts bashing at the window until his hands start bleeding and screaming at Maya the whole time. Ben's room is filled with a knockout gas, the glass goes opaque, and Maya heads straight to Sully's office. Upon entering, Maya is understandably pissed about Ben's treatment, but as it turns out, it's only because of Sully that he's being treated as well as he is. Prior to Sully's arrival, Ben was basically kept in isolation. He had developed a tick, nearly rubbed his head raw. But Sully was able to help, gave him stuff to write with, kept him calm. Until Maya had visited, Ben had not needed to be gassed in quite a while. As they talk, we learn that Sully is planning to use Ben as a PR stunt, send out a video for the Free Giro people, and hopefully bring some stability to those regions. Maya tries to point out that it won't work, based on her experience, while bringing up the moral issues of Sully's actions, but Sully pretty much just brushes her off, and that's putting it politely. In short, Sully has really become a dick in the years since the fall of Circinius IV. He's Oni, as if we needed more confirmation of that. The full exchange between Maya and Sully is damn interesting to listen to, and no summary could do it justice. Both bring up points to defend their views, and neither is entirely refutable. Maya accuses Sully of leading Ben to the slaughter, while Sully argues that he gave Ben every warning to back off. And really, both of them are right. Their conversation comes to a close as Sully gives Maya a warning about coming near Ben again, and Maya threatens Sully about coming near her again. A corporal then enters to inform Maya that Commander Noah Rebeck is waiting for her, and Maya leaves to meet him. Now that we're hearing Noah in person, it's pretty clear that he's actually played by Alan Tudyk, so probably no Mickey this season. Anyway, Noah informs Maya that she was brought in for a new mission. The day before, Oni received transmissions from various colonies showing devastation and destruction from an unknown source. Sound familiar? When you hear the audio of these transmissions playing in the episode, a lot of it matches up with the audio heard in a few of those Meridian clips, so I think it's pretty clear at this point that those clips are of when a Guardian is waking up on Meridian. Further, I'm pretty damn certain that these incidents are the same attacks that Captain Lasky mentions in the Halo 5 opening cinematic. Things are starting to come together. So with these mysterious attacks happening out of nowhere, Maya is being sent undercover once again as Pharaoh, but this time to discover the source. And to Maya's discomfort, she's going to have to get in with the new Colonial Alliance. As it turns out, while Oni has been able to secure four of the five sites, the fifth has fallen under NCA control. Maya's pretty anxious about being sent to infiltrate the NCA based on past experience with the group, but luckily, she won't be alone. Noah pins an NCA badge on her and introduces a character we've actually met before. Black Box. And God, he is just as smug as I imagined when reading Kilo 5. And it certainly helps that he's played by Peter Serafinowicz. Sorry if I butchered that name. I can't wait to hear the banter between him and Maya going forward. For all the time that BB is in this episode, he steals the scene for every second. As the episode comes to a close, Maya asks about the status of another agent, Ari, that had already been sent in to infiltrate the NCA. 
According to Noah, they lost contact after Ari relayed intel about the attacks. And as soon as Noah says that, Maya is suddenly pissed again. They knew about the attacks and didn't warn anyone? Well, as it turns out, there just wasn't time. Oni had been trying to verify the intel when the attacks happened, as the intel had come from someone that had burned Oni before. Now initially, I hadn't thought much of that line, but a shout out to Miguel V on Twitter for making the connection. So, who do we know that might know about Forerunner attacks and has burned Oni before? Sounds a bit like Dr. Halsey, doesn't it? It certainly does to me. While I doubt that we'll hear from Halsey in Hunt the Truth itself, I love these parallels to Halo 5, and I can't help but wonder what other events from Halo 5 may be echoed in this series, and vice versa. The episode comes to a close as Oni starts working out Pharaoh's story for escape, and Maya starts to realize exactly what the stakes of her mission are. And that's episode 1. So much is happening, and I'm loving these parallels to the events of Halo 5. I I'm almost at a loss for words. In related news, there were actually two more video clips released today, which I actually played earlier. These were from Chief Canuck and, I'm proud to say, the Halo Archive. Good on ya, Archive. Nothing new content-wise, just more destruction. Anyway, thanks for joining me for another breakdown of Hunt the Truth. Until next time, may your lights continue to shine. Praise be to Dosk.